Hi folks, this is Glenn Guy at the Arcanum and I am interviewing my good friend Hugh Ferguson. Hi there Hugh. How are you doing there Glenn? Uh, really good thanks. Um, just preparing for Christmas of course, it's only a couple of days away so I uh, wanted to use this opportunity really to introduce you to the world and to um, uh, allow folks to get a look at some of your great photographs but also to document your journey in photography. Um, and where it's taken you over recent times. So I wonder if you could just start off by giving us an idea about how long you've been into photography and perhaps the reason that that brought you into making pictures seriously. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm actually I, I came into photography really late, which uh, uh, I really regret. It's only really the last two years. I don't even think I'd really taken many holiday snaps before that. It was. Uh, but I, I'd been very active. Um, I might not look at now, but at, at, I was heavily into uh, mountain climbing and mountain biking and walking. And I developed. Uh, I, I developed. I actually got a genetic defect in my in my lower legs, so which doesn't manifest itself. <coughs> you don't see it, but I actually got more and more painful, and eventually got worse. I actually couldn't walk very far. I couldn't cycle. I couldn't ski. So. I had two years of just getting, you know, further and further depressed about the whole thing, putting on a lot of weight, and uh, and then I actually, funny enough, it was two. I actually went to the London Olympics. I, I, I took my sister and uh, Connor and a few few friends down, and we actually went to the main stadium. And a pure chance, we got on what was what we we Brits call Super Saturday. We call it Super Saturday because we won three gold medals in there. Uh, Sort of in the space of about half an hour, so mm -hmm. obviously very jingoistic and nationalistic. It's uh, it's called Super Saturday, and I was sitting there with my BlackBerry, taking really crappy photos, thinking, <laughs> "Oh God, I wish I could take some photos, proper photos." And I went back and I thought, "Well, maybe I can start getting a bit out into the hills again. You know, I don't have to walk very far, but photography might sort of reignite and reconnect me to the love I have of 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 the landscape, which mm -hmm. which is really the, the common factor in all the actives I did was the fact that it was out in the in the wilds. So that's what I did. Okay. I bought myself a camera and uh, a couple of years ago, and 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 just immediately fell in love with it. And how's the mobility these days? Um, it's not too bad. Uh, it's it, I still can't walk very far, mm. so, but uh, and I have to wear the right shoes, otherwise it's crippling. So. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. It's, it's getting better, I think. Oh, that's great to know. Now, um, you know, if if you had to undertake a kilometre or two walk, can you do that? Yeah, probably. It's it's uh, it depends on what it is. Is when when if when my feet get under stress, so skiing mm -hmm. or, or when I'm climbing up a slope, then when you're putting a lot of strain into in your foot, that's when it really gets bad. So walking on the flat isn't so bad. Okay, because you were a bit of a mountaineer, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was well, not, uh, not not any not 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 a professional anywhere near that. But I did, uh, yeah, quite a few of the few of the famous uh, mountains. Not not. Uh, I was never into rock climbing. I'm the wrong shape to be a rock climber. My power to weight ratio is terrible, so I couldn't uh, I couldn't sort of hop, hang off by one finger on a on a on a cliff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I used to do a lot of ice climbing because I found that a lot easier because you didn't necessarily have to have the reach that you do for, you know, rock climbing. Plus the fact that rock climbing scared the hell out of me, uh, to be honest. I'm quite yeah. happy scrambling up mountains rather than uh, rock climbing. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's amazing. So I guess the, the 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 good thing to take out of it is that you um you did it all when you were able to. Um, so in a way, there's Hopefully, no regrets because you you did get to do a lot of the stuff you you love doing before the um the condition um kind of took control. Yeah, that's right. And I think in case could, you know because suddenly I became so sedate, then my as I get older, that's sort of going to put pressure on my health. So it's mm. quite important that I get out there and uh, and get fitter. But yeah, and it's great because photography, of course, isn't such necessarily such a, an arduous uh, pursuit. It can be arduous pursuit, but um, 
you know, it, it gets you out there and it gets you moving and then gradually maybe the the flexibility or whatever has been that's been lost, maybe you can start to regain some of that over time. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Oh, that's that's great. Um, so that that's fascinating. And then, so how, that's just been a couple of years then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, then, I really had three cameras as well. <laughs> <laughs> and oh well, now we've got to touch on that, don't we? So what are those three cameras? Well, I, start, I started off with a, a Canon 40D, I think it was. Yeah. Just a cheapo, and then I moved to uh, a 6D, Canon 6D. Mm -hmm. And now, earlier on this year, it still is this year, isn't it? Yeah, just about. I got the Sony 87R. And no regrets. Have you found that? Because um, it's a daunting move to move from DSLR onto mirrorless. Because you know you've got to obviously be with the mirrorless system for a while before you're comfortable with it. But no regrets. None at all. No. Uh, the the only issue I've had, I mean, I didn't. The reason I went for the for the Sony was, I mean, because I was I wasn't necessarily fixated with getting a full frame. It was the fact that I could go for a smaller camera and still use my Canon lenses. I think I think that's just, can, Sony didn't come out with many lenses to begin with. Mm, but they were right. smart in the fact that almost any lens can, with an adapter can be fitted to the Sony. So the system, I think that's a smart move. Yeah, isn't that a real lesson for Nikon and Canon? I mean, I'm, I know they've got their lenses that they want to protect that market because you'd argue that's where they make their money on their lenses and accessories rather than their cameras. Um, and, you know, the idea is once you've bought into the system, then you need to buy lenses made by that manufacturer. Of course, there are some exceptions. You can buy Tamron and Takina and Sigma lenses made for Canon or Nikon. But it's still a relatively closed market. But by having a more open um, system, um, it actually encourages the consumer to try you because it's not such a risk. All you're doing is buying the body, and you can source um, lenses from, you know, I mean, Olympus have done it with their um, uh, kind of connection with Panasonic in that um, four thirds range camera. But Sony are just the most open, as you say, because all you need is an adapter, and you can use lenses going back generations from other manufacturers. It's um, it's fantastic. It's a really positive sign, I think, for the future of the industry. Hmm. Mm. Uh, so tell us, Hugh, um, you're with the Arcanum now. When would you have, um, which I'm associated with, of course, as one of the um, we refer to as masters. Um, how long have you been there? When did you join? I joined uh, in August this year. So mm. I think that's when I actually sorry, that's when that's when I got picked by by your good self. Yes. Uh, but, but I actually probably put I put my application in very early actually because because I followed as seven million other people do Trey Radcliffe. Yeah. And so I got, I got a notification of the Arcanum as a concept. Uh, so when it was opened up, I, I actually was. Fairly, fairly soon after it opened up. Oh, so you're a, what we'd call an early adapter. And actually, I think it's now about 15 million followers, Trey Scott. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I, I joined as a, a master just a little bit before that. I, I'm not sure, maybe maybe early July, and I went through kind of a training period for you know something, something like a month. And so you were one of the first I picked. Um, and it's funny because it's it's just a joke here, but you know it's like that notion of um, uh, when the student's ready, the master will um, appear or something. <laughs> because if I'd come in earlier, I'm sure I would have picked you earlier. But um, I think the timing was right, and you were one of the first um, that I picked in in the group. And we now have almost 30 in our cohort. It's a bit different. Most folks, most of the masters have got 20 in their initial cohort. And I've built mine up to uh, it'll be 30 in a few days, which I think is a great number. And uh, it's a really love. It's a great mix of people too, isn't it? They're from all different parts of the world and all different levels of experience. Some of them are really computer savvy. Some of them aren't. Some of them are into Photoshop. Some of them are just Lightroom only. It's a good mix, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's that oh, makes it strong. I think. I don't think uh, if we're all uniform. It would be pretty boring, and you probably wouldn't learn much. So. Uh, exactly, and that, I spent a lot of time sourcing people, 
based on that criteria. I wanted to make it not easy on myself. I wanted to make it um, more challenging, but much more interesting for everyone. Uh, and and what we're finding is because we've built a really good community, folks are just helping each other, which is you know, you know they actually they they bond to the Arcanum, they bond to you know if you like it, to me, but they also bond to each other, and that's my ultimate aim. Um, so you know, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with the way it's going. So maybe, um, well, why don't we have a quick look at um, the interface that people um, uh, work with in the Arcanum? You know, it's a private community, but we can just show this uh, this briefly. So we we're using Google Plus at the moment. Um, longer term, we'll move on to something else. But it's uh, it's been great to get us going. And this is the, um, the 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 standard community that I run, um, and, and that's not me, by the way. That picture on the top left, uh, the photo gets changed every week, so that's a photo made by one of our members. Bill, I think, made that one, if I remember right. No, it's actually Mike. Oh, you're right. Um, Mike Riccardi, one of our newest members. It's a great picture, and Mike's a great musician, a drummer himself. Um, and uh, with the uh, the band Bad Finger. Uh, who started in the 60s? They were the first band to be signed by Apple, you know, other than the Beatles. So there's quite a history there. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is this is the community. Um, do you want to explain kind of what it's all about to give people an idea? Yeah, sure. I mean, the community there's, there's a couple of uses for it really. Uh, on a more formal level. Uh, the Arcanum is divided up into levels, and each level has a task, and you have to complete that task. So the community is a way of communicating on between ourselves and you as the master um, of the completion of those levels. So there's a, there's the very formal side, very functional side, and then on, on top of that, um, the Arcanum and yourself has layered on other aspects that. Uh, you know, weekly challenges and photo challenges, photo of the week, inspirations. So other uh, other aspects of photography that we can bring in as part of the learning process. Yeah, so the first half of these categories on the left are, are really non-compulsory things that we've just introduced um, to spice it up and make it interesting for folks. Because I really wanted um, the experience, for, particularly for those folks who weren't necessarily <clears throat> particularly computer savvy, didn't spend a lot of time on YouTube, didn't spend a lot of time Googling stuff, you know, uh, didn't look at a lot of different photography sites. We, I wanted a one-stop shop where they could come in and explore those things themselves, um, get feedback on the photos they make, um, look at, um, yeah, inspirational posts made outside of this site, ones that we've brought in, and that would include some YouTube stuff. The difference, it's, it's curated, you know, where picking the stuff that we think is appropriate um, for the members of the cohort and we empower them to do the same if they find a, a post or um, you know a YouTube video that they think other folks would benefit from they're then able to post inside the community as well um, and you know we're we're giving tips on how to build a portfolio members voice is a good one isn't it because that allows people to show maybe their own to link to posts in their own blog site or their own YouTube channel, um, and they're they're the individual uh, assessment tasks, if you like, the exercises people go through to work their way up. And um, there are actually twenty uh, levels that uh, folks progress through at their own pace. Um, so maybe we should have a. I'm just going to um, do a quick little search here in our community for uh, posts that you've contributed to. And what we're showing, folks, is just a, a small section of actually what's available. But because it's a private community, I've got to be a bit careful what I show. Um, so here are the posts that uh, you've contributed to. Do you want to take us through a few of these, Hugh? Yeah. Well, actually, uh, if you look, if you look at the screen closely, you'll see next my name actually that in green. I'm a moderator of this community, so quite a few of my posts are related to the moderating side, but. Uh, so I, I post a mixture of things. Uh, it's quite a few on the on the inspiration side, some videos, YouTube videos, etc., and as well as um, my own, obviously my level uh, photos, um, as well as 
posing some questions, which uh, I quite like to do, throw a little hand grenade in every now and again to see what, see if it generates a bit of discussion, which with alcohol hall it does. It's great fun to see uh, everyone so respond to it. An example might be one of these um, uh, Google polls, for instance. That you, I mean, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think further up there, you'll see. I one post the other day is what you know. I challenged, challenged there one about style, and it generated some long responses. A good discussion. Uh huh. Okay, so it's kind of like a mini blog post in a way. That one. It can and be. Then, yeah, uh, you can use it like that. Yeah, yeah. and it's. Uh, I think the Google, the Google platform. Is it's quite difficult for people to get their head around and they haven't used it before, but it's actually very conducive to sharing information and mm. collaborating with people. So getting links from outside, especially with YouTube, especially anything within the Google framework and family is very very easy. But you know, bringing in anything from the internet is quite quite easy. So you can bring a huge amount of information into into the community. Uh, without an awful lot of work on your on your behalf, mm. and isn't it great because the the individual members, the apprentices, actually own it in a way. Then, like I set down the guidelines, and I work with you and our other moderator, um, Kingsley Burton, to kind of set some policies um, and an approach and the way we want it to look and feel. But then, folks, once once folks get an idea of that, they're welcome to to add anything at all. Um, that you know is yeah. in line with that that o overarching philosophy, yeah. And and then they they do they kind of start to own it then, and that's very important to me. Yeah, because I think, the, the, well, from my understanding and my experience, the philosophy of the Arcanum is isn't a formal teacher that sits down and, and, and gives a lesson and everyone takes notes. It's uh, the fact that you've got a community of people together. So sort of eighty percent of the time, it's the interaction of the Community members that you know we're all, we're all in it together. We all have to interact. We all have to sort of put in our, our points of view uh, and critique each other's photographs. And as you, as the master, will be is sort of orchestrating that. And then in the, through these formal la levels, you'd come in and, and and do some various assessments of where we're at and give us guidance as to where to get, go away. Looking again, so. This community is exceptionally important, and the, and people interacting, people being active, in, in, is is essential for the whole whole of the Arcanum philosophy to work, in my view. And everyone, no one's going to be active all the time. I mean, and everyone's got lives, and mm. it's always difficult to to be completely active. But people come in and out, uh, and so there is a good fresh input all the time going on in this community. It took a while to build up, but I think now everyone's sort of quite happy to post things and contribute. So it works really well. Yeah, I would say that we probably have between a quarter and a third of folks posting on almost a daily basis, but then there'd be a number of other people who are just observing and um, soaking up the content, only posting occasionally. And then we have folks who, you know, as you say, life just gets in the way and they, um, they just take a break for a week or so and then come back with a flurry and then take another break. So the great thing is it's self-paced. You're not forced to keep up with anyone else and the content is here whenever you want it, whenever you're ready for it. And I, I might just um, build on what you said, Hugh, because I think there are three components to the, the uh, canon and you, you, know, you correctly identified the most important one, which is the community. Um, and then the other components would be, you also mentioned this, the the master's role in, in giving these regular one-on-one -on -one critiques of people's photos. The idea being to give them, in a very supportive environment, to give them um, uh, feedback that's positive, uh, affirming, but also not shying away from uh, potential problems or things that could be improved on. Um, so that, you know, that's, that's, quite, that's valued and I think that's a real major, if you like, selling point of the the Arcanum. And then, you know, the third thing is the Grand Library, which are, you know, there's many, many videos there on all aspects of photography, but it's it's better than something like YouTube because it's it's again curated in a way because the the videos are made by the masters. So we understand what um, 
the apprentices we're responsible with are after, and we have an understanding then of um, you know their their level of understanding of expertise. So we're really crafting those tutorial videos for the needs of the apprentices. So you know it's it's you're not just Googling or going into YouTube and doing a search and maybe having to wade through a whole range of um, videos and posts before you get to the appropriate one. So I think I think that's actually a really powerful thing, the Grand Library. But we would rate it as the third most important aspect. The second one is the um, relationship with the master and those one-on-one -on -one critiques, which is pretty fantastic because to to get a, a critique with a master one-on-one, -on -one, you know, I mean, th there would be a value placed on that by the master, a dollar value, and uh, it would be, I think it's fair to say, beyond the monthly fee that people are paying just for that aspect. Um, and then there's the, um, yeah, the community, which is the most important thing, and that's what I'm most happy about, the way that's, um, what we've been able to build that up and the way that people have embraced it. It's, it's fantastic. There's a real bond between the individual members. For sure. Uh, now, so we're just looking at some of the, the posts that you've placed over time. Here's a, 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 a weekly challenge I remember setting, a non-technical one where, hey folks, show us your, your workspace. So you've got the kooky um, <laughs> um, monitor placed on you know, the portrait orientation and against your main monitor there. So um, it was interesting to see, because we've got folks from all over the world, you know. I remember, you remember Anita's um, a post where she actually yeah. made a little video showing the various places she works in in her home in Algeria. So that was wonderful. Um, and here's one of your critiques, your level nine critique up here. Um, so what are some of the um, what are some of the things that? Oh, here's a, a poll that you made where you asked folks about the software that they use um, and uh, of the options you provided. These are really pl uh, plugins. Google's uh, NIC software won uh, by a mile, 77% over the other options. Um, so what are some of the other things that you, you're particularly responsible for as a moderator? And, and how, how would you describe the, the difference between a moderator and um, an apprentice? Well, I think there's a, there's a, a fundamental, uh, it's not quite a policeman's role, but I guess you could look at it from that way in terms of Making sure that the navigation of the community stays clean, and there, as we all found out, there are various little uh, peculiarities that Google Plus throws out, three little bugs, which means that the interface can get very cluttered. So there is that sort of policing. Um, there's a bit of uh, being a, 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 a sort of uh, bleating on to people to uh, to do things in a certain way. So it's very clever that the masters can get, I can get unpopular and you guys look fairly clean. So I'm the one that's moaning and nagging people, which is fine. There's that side of it. The other side was, and it's probably more at the beginning, where everyone was a bit reticent how to, to inter interact. So yeah. Yeah. it was really to try and galvanize people, to sort of put questions out, to post a lot of stuff so that people can see the sort of thing that can be done and, and just to keep the information flowing. So there was that and that, that's proved, well I don't know, I can't take really credit for that, I think uh, uh, an influx of uh, exceptional uh, apprentices have, have sort of dived in and, and with enthusiasm and created the sort of inter interaction we see. Um, now, of course, one of the things that when we did when we did start putting a lot of stuff out there outside the formal levels, that uh, there was a bit of a recoil by quite a few of the members who said that I'm just getting flooded. I just don't know where to look. And I think, they had, I think we had a choice at that point, you and the master and us as moderators as well, do we cut back or, or do we make it easier for people to navigate? And I think we didn't want to cut back. I think it's important that this information flows through. So. Um, we try and sort of through videos and through weekly reports to actually just summarize so those people that don't necessarily have a lot of time just want to dip in they don't have to go through huge lists of posts they can actually go and see the most pertinent posts for that week which often involve 
where people are looking for feedback on a formal formal basis or videos that you've posted. So the moderators uh, is a number of things. It's encouraging. It's a policing, and it's and it's an information uh, conduit. Yeah, it's been it's been great, and and you know we had to make this up as we went because this is the, I mean it's certainly out of beta now, but it's it's quite mature I think in many ways the the structure of the Arcanum, um, still working within the Google Plus framework, but you know um, what we've set up here on the the side all the different categories, half of those um, will vary from cohort to cohort, so it's got my personality in it if you like, and we've even set up. Um, a sister uh, site which we won't show now but we call it Geek City and that um, that's there uh, dealing predominantly with the more technical aspects of photography so you're right if folks are on a particular day they want to get in and and look at uh, new equipment uh, that's out uh, reviews on cameras um, uh, Photoshop workflow Lightroom workflow um, stuff on exposure whatever it may be if it's technical related it's going to be in our sister community um, but this this main community is really where, where we've decided to put the more artistic endeavors um, and you know it's it's very it's been very well received we wanted to make it as easily to navigate as possible as easy to navigate as possible uh, and I think it's been um, yeah it's been successful and but you know it was an organic process and we've been working on it right from day one and it's it's now pretty much right. <laughs> <laughs> but it took a while, but it means, you know, when the next uh, lot of people come in, it'll be very mature and ready to go from um, their first uh, first day in the community, yeah. Yeah, um, I think, I think it's, it's, it's self-generating now. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't require an awful lot of policing or encouraging. It's everyone, you know, everyone's got the trigger and they're, they're off. Agreed, agreed. And in fact, our, you know, once regular... Um, uh, meetings that we used to have outside of the cohort, our moderator meetings, you know, they've uh, they've fallen away as well because we don't really uh, need to have them as such. Um, and the idea now is that we can actually start to, um, you know, I can try to reward you in Kingsley for all the efforts you've made and try to find some interesting things um, to help you, um, you know, kind of progress your your path through the Arcanum. Um, so yeah. That's I think that's that's going to be great as well. Now, you, you you and Kingsley both write a regular weekly report. What's the idea of that? That's really just as I said before was to try and distill the critical information into one place, rather than having everyone. There's a couple of ways we do it. We we we've also got a search term that we've introduced that people can use, the seven days one, um, which again is just put on the posts that are most critical. Um, so it's a, it's a way of filtering out. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't insult everyone by saying it's less important stuff, but it's it's not. Uh, these these are the key posts that we, people it needs people's attention rather than just a matter of interest. That's right, and we really did it specifically for folks who, on any given week, just may not have been able to make make the commitment that they wanted to. You know, life got in the way. It means they can come in and, and basically say, "Show me what you think." It's a cu we're curating it for them. Show show me what you think are the most important posts that I need to see over the last seven days, and you know, in a flash up they come. And so that's been been well received. Um, yeah, I think if anyone was looking to to be a moderator in any other community, I think I put words in your mouth, but I think Kingsley and I fell out. Of, of the <laughs> initial influx because we probably had more than anyone else had a better understanding experience of Google Plus and I think it's very important that you understand some of how Google Plus works. Well that's right and in fact that's been one of my um, endeavours um, running this show to to try to encourage us all to learn more about it and so you know the hashtags are a part of that the, the categories, understanding how they work, posting, we're posting in albums, we're, we're bringing things in from outside and you know it's not just a matter of you and I doing it, it's a matter of we've, we've worked really hard to encourage other people to do it as well. 
because I deliberately targeted people that had really no experience in Google with that in mind. And so, you know, it's 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 because I used to teach at university, so it's that concept. You're not just teaching them photography; you're kind of preparing them for life. And in this yeah. case, it's preparing them for um, the digital life. So that's that, yeah. that's uh, an important component of what we do for sure. Yeah, because I think I think because K Kingsley and I both post a lot. We put a lot in, but people might think that we spend hours doing it, but it's not. I can't speak for Kingsley, but myself, it's very easy because I've set up Google Plus so that I can just I can just collect all the resources on there and just post them. I'm, I'm not going looking for them. I have, you know, you set up circles with where you subscribe to different people and you see all their posts and then something of interest. All I do is share it. It's not a. It's actually very easy once you set up properly in Google. It's very very easy to find information and share it. Yes, and I've just brought up here one of your uh, weekly um, reports that you do. Again, as as a quick way for folks to get an idea about what's happened, you know uh, how how folks have moved through particular levels in the uh, cohort, some of the new features that were introduced on a particular week. Um, there's our new community, Geek City, and the fact that we added a new category called Fix My Photo. So that was a good one because that's for folks who maybe are having trouble trying to process a photo. They've had a go, but they, they're not happy with the result, and they've given it over to the community. We're using, we've introduced them to Google Drive in the process. They put the image um, onto Google Drive, and uh, they say, can you have a go at processing this for me? And that allows the person who processes the photo to maybe make a short um, video explaining how they went about it. So they become the teacher, you know, because we're also trying to build um, masters of the future. So, you know, I would expect that in my cohort there'll be a number of masters, folks that will move on to running their cohort within a relatively short period of time. And this is all part of the underlying philosophy of the Arcanum as well. Fantastic. Now, um, I wonder, Hugh, uh, could we start to have a look at some of your recent work, maybe, some of the, to give people an idea about how your photography has progressed during your time in the Arcanum. I mean, it's only about five months, of course, but would you be happy if we do that? Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay. There we go. So I've uh, actually, well, we've got nine pictures here to work through. So uh, if you want to take us on a, a journey. Okay. Um, um, yeah. I mean, one of the reasons that I joined the Canon was I, as I said, I learned, started two, two years ago and just absorbed and read as much as I could and went out and took as many photographs as I could. I plateaued very quickly. Um, and I also had this feeling that I was taking good photos but not great photos. So I wanted a bit of a crisis of confidence. So this this photo here and the, the first three or four photos that I'm going to show you are, are, are the sort of things that I used to I took when I first joined uh, five months ago. And I don't there's nothing wrong with these. I, I still want to take photos like this, by the way. I don't want to I don't want to evolve away from this because this this to me is I still look for light and color and, and shape. And texture in a, in a fantastic landscape that I live in. So I don't want to move away from that, but I want to move away, move towards distilling the essence of a place in a photograph that doesn't sort of just merely take what's in front of me. It's not really just a facsimile or a postcard of what's in front, a, a, a documentary record. Mm. So first, like this, the light's great. Uh, well. Uh, it, 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 the light's great on, on my monitor. It doesn't look quite as good here, but uh, it's, it very much conjures up the sort of the light and weather that we have here. You want to move on? Yeah, it's, it's a, great though. I love this image. Yeah, oh, so. it's probably a series of, of landscape sort of uh, shots coming up. Yeah, and I was very much involved with. Taking pictures in the in the in golden hours uh, only, not really sort of experimenting with anything else. 
Now, as you're you're sharing these pictures, um, so you, you know you had roughly the knowledge to be able to um, record the image of the camera, but how quickly after you joined the Arcanum were you then starting to incorporate maybe new ideas for how to process the file? It's very quickly because what what the Canon did was the first thing it did was to strip away these hang-ups I had. So <laughs> yeah. hang up that you know it's it's against the rules to to interpret a place, a time, or a moment. It has to be you know if it doesn't if it's not real, it's it's not uh, it's not worthy. And that I think that. that <laughs> the biggest mistake I did was to join a camera club. Um, I think mm. I've explained this before, mm. where <laughs> it was full of sniffy people that looked down on you and, and, and made it quite well known that they looked down on you. Mm. And anything that deviated from their picture, their ideal picture, with their endless competitions, was was deemed um, second class. And I, and my instinct wasn't to do that. Now, my, this this photo here is more along the lines of my instinct. Yes, yes, that's right. Not following the rules, but just um, being intu taking an intuitive approach. Yeah, I, 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 I need to move on from that. I don't want to lose lose the intuition, but mm. I think I need to think about it. I think I think I'm still more of a snapper than I am a, a photographer. So even though if I see something and my intuition says to take it, I'll take it. I probably need to spend a bit more time now analysing what it is about it that got my interest. And what I wanted to convey. Yeah, I mean, that's, what, that's, that's what I'm beginning to do. Great. And I think the secret is you don't actually spend much time in the landscape, like with your camera thinking through it. That that should still be intuitive, but you'll find over time the the decisions you make you make based on your intuition will change because you're doing your analysing when you're looking at the image on the desktop. You know, when you're yeah. editing and saying, well, which one is worth processing and which ones do I delete? And if you, you get in the habit of deleting images that aren't successful, um, you'll then surround yourself with what you do well and that will cause you to actually do more of the same thing in the future. Um, and so the decision to take where, where to put the camera, you know, uh, what um, whether to shoot upwards or downwards or move to the side or whatever, uh, whether to use a wide angle or telly, that's still largely intuitive and the decision is often made quickly but it's, be, it's being, um, it's a more mature decision, it's, it's, it's one that you're likely to um, more often make keepers if you like, because it's going to be the correct decision more often because you've spent the time analysing the pictures that work later on. So yeah. I, I think absolutely. that's how it works, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I think if I, if, if away from my foot Photographs. What the photographs I really enjoy are nothing like the photographs I take. <laughs> and that's the. If I guess it's hard to articulate it really, but when I mean, you're a musician, so if, if say I was a musician that uh, I wanted to write music and, and I'm, I'm really into the Clash, uh, and so I want to go out and write a song like the Clash. But what I end up writing is some insipid One Direction tune. <laughs> And then I can't. I just can't bring. I, just, I haven't got the talent to bring out what I want. So this, this is how I feel about photography at the moment. Is that I know what I want to do. I know how I feel. I just can't articulate it the way I want at the moment. Well, well if I may, let me say <clears throat> that these days most people would jump to your assistance and say straight away, "Oh no, no, no! You're really good. You're really important. You know, um, everything's okay." And I actually think that's babying people. I don't. I think it's good to to be pushing yourself like that to never be completely happy and yet recognize that you're getting better all the time because you know if 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 you don't it's not about beating yourself up but if you're not always striving to be better you won't become better um but at the same time you don't want that you don't want negativity to creep in and actually stop you getting out and making pictures because People are scared about succeeding, aren't they? Um, that's what holds them back in life in general, you know, whether it be business or, you know, oh, there's a pretty girl. Um, oh, no, I won't, I won't ask her. She'll say no, you know, for a dance. Uh, you know, it's, it's the same thing. It's that negativity that actually stops us being successful. So we get out there and we do the best we can 
and we look at the result and we celebrate what's good about it, but we should always then look uh, as objectively as possible and seek feedback from appropriate people, not just people that are going to pat us on the back, but uh, you know people that we, we value their comments and actually um, look to see what they say and maybe try to incorporate that in the work into the future because that's how, how we get better. Yeah. Yeah. But I also think it's, it's that, I mean, I, even though I want to progress from these images, I, I don't want to move away from making these images. Oh, no. I think no. they still have a place. Well, just, they do. Sorry, Hugh, they do. And if, if you look at this one, there's, there's a great composition, if you like, great design. The vertical lines in the picture, you know, the, the repetition of the, the trees, the green trees on the left, and the vertical lines of the trunks, and then the way that curves into a diagonal in the reflection, you know, that, that's composition. Um, so, yes, it's a pretty location. It's beautiful light. And for goodness sake, why wouldn't we want to take pictures at that time of day? That's, you know, yeah. soul-stirring stuff. That's what life's about. You know, we yeah. should have 23 hours a day, like 23 hours a day at least like this. Um, yeah. so there's no reason you wouldn't do it, but you, you start to do it in a different way. Uh, uh, and all I mean by that is you, you strip it back to its um, core elements and you do what you need to do to, to emphasize those elements. And that's when it becomes art because you're just not documenting nature you're, um, you're um, responding to it, you're actually showing your response to the world around you. And yeah. what, you, what you exclude from the frame is almost as important as what you include, just as an example of that, yeah. So, you know, I think your compositions improved dramatically um, over the last couple of months, and that's one of the things that has allowed your response to the landscape to come through because it's the passion you feel for light and and the natural world that brought you into photography and that's what's starting to come through in your photographs so I don't think it's what we photograph it's how we do it and why we do it that actually comes through in our pictures yeah and here's a perfect example yeah so I think it's, it's almost as if I've sort of deconstructed and now I'm now I'm trying to put it back together again. So mm. I'm sort of going through a period where I necessarily won't be taking great photographs, but I think it's necessary as part of that reconstruction journey to sort of, as you say, just, just concentrate on the essence and know what to leave out. I mean, I was really pleased with this one because it invokes a feeling that I had at the time. You know, yes. that, that eerie sort of but beautiful desolation of that place that it was and the, and the quiet it, you know I can see that in this photograph so that's why that's why I like this one and it's one that the community responded to you know incredibly positively for exactly the reasons you mentioned you see you know what's subject matter well in many ways what we think is subject matter is really it's not subject it's object so you know um, uh, a rock uh, trees, um, mist, that's not really the subject of the picture. The subject of the picture is not what's in front of you. The subject of the picture is the story you're telling, the emotions you're exploring, you know, the, the, the weather. Because this picture, as much as anything else, is about weather um, and light, I think. That's really what it's about. Um, and so if our pictures, if people respond to our pictures emotionally, that's actually what the picture's about, not the not the subject, not the objects that we're photographed. Yeah, um, and that's when it becomes and, art. Yeah. yeah, and photos like this, uh, they're influenced by by you, but also by other other cohort members. There's, mm. there's certain members of the cohort who who whose photographs I have a natural affinity for, and so this is where the canon is. It's almost subconsciously teaching me without me realising it. Yes, that's right. Um, so how about spilling the beans? Uh, do you want to name a few? Um, oh well, it's, it's it's not it's not who you include; it's who you leave out. <laughs> it's, but it's it's not. I mean, I think I think uh, following Sandra, Connie, and Anita, I have an so, actual affinity for that for their photos. So you've just expressed your undying uh, love for those uh, those three girls. Yeah, it's um, all the females. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and, and well, yeah, actually, funny enough, petty as well, because they've all they, they've all got they, they they've got very much a, a, an economical style. And ah, the lead well is fantastic. I actually manages to get in in Algeria, and 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 Connie with her tonal range, and and then Sandra with just she's, she's really stripping things back to the very essence. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's it's the ones that are. The sort of have a style that I actually like and, and, and sort of aspire to, I guess that I have affinity for. And Hugh, would you say that it's easier to strip things back when the image is black and white? Um, I, in some ways, it, I, it sometimes, yes and no, because sometimes stripping it black and white, I feel like it's cheating in a way, you know, it's easier to strip. I, I don't want to take a photo and say, well, that's just, that's going to look it's going to look better in black and white because I can strip out a lot of stuff. I want to be able to look at I'm to look look at the subject matter as it is and say mm -hmm. this that is the essence of what is attracting to me rather than am I, am I explaining this right? Rather than sort I, of thinking I, how I process to get to that point. Yeah, I think so because I think what you're saying is actually by stripping away the colour, you're revealing so much more complexity in the photograph. In that yeah. case. Yes, that makes perfect sense uh, because now we can see all those other composition elements that were being somewhat hidden by the colour. Um, yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Let's see what else we've got. These are great images. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, I, I always look for light and this was, uh, this was actually a, a photo I didn't think I was successful. Uh, when I took it, it wasn't until I got back and I converted it to black and white that I realised that actually I managed to get the, that the, the light. It's actually fun enough what you, what you said is, is that colour can get in the way. So stripping out the colour in this image has made it a lot stronger image. Absolutely, it's a, it's a classic. I think it's an amazing picture. Um, it's got all the great elements of a a classic black and white image. And you've explored mood through the image, and mood leads you to metaphor, and you know you've explored weather as well because the clouds against that dark sky are just incredible, and it's really an image of transition in a way because you know weather moves uh, uh, through the landscape, doesn't it? It moves across the landscape, and it really yeah. has, the, and and that then suggests the movement of time, and of course that is. Uh, in a way, frozen in in a, a cemetery. In a way, you know, it's 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 a world beyond time. In a way, a cemetery. I know graves deteriorate over time, but um, you know, it's just the metaphors um, that that are present in this picture. Yeah, you know, I think it's it's fantastic, and it really has the look of a gritty sort of Tri X four hundred film from days gone by, the Kodak four hundred speed black and white film, particularly if it was pushed to eight hundred or sixteen hundred. You know, it's beautiful. And yet there's a rugged grittiness about it too, which you know probably fits well with the um, uh, the Scottish landscape. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And and if you you know if you if you don't like weather, then Scotland's not the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, it's a lot of it. Well, you know, I've said uh, numerous times that I feel that Ansel Adams, the, the the master black and white photographer from you know days gone by, his images were certainly about the landscape but more importantly they were about weather. His best images of Yosemite for instance are all about weather and yeah. you know, so that, that's the thing, what makes you unique? <laughs> These days they call it a unique selling proposition don't they but so many of us photograph the landscape but what's different about our landscape photos and it's a question we all have to ask ourselves. We, we, we narrow down to our best work and we just try not to look at it through a photographer's viewpoint any longer, we just look at it from a consumer's viewpoint or we ask consumers, you know, what are these images of, what do they remind you of and once you understand how they connect with other people, you then go out thinking about that when you make pictures and you'll make more and more successful pictures that actually are echoing what you're about. We have to know what we're about and it's, it's worthwhile just asking that question and then that clarifies our purpose when we're out there. We have a reason for going out taking pictures rather than just, you know, 
f22 at you know 60 yeah. of a second or something but I think this must have something that occurred to me is that your environment that you learn in probably has an influence on how you what sort of photography you are because you know the Scottish mountains with the weather then you've I've had to learn a certain way because it was interesting when I went to Tuscany last this year yeah. I went there and it was like someone had blown up a paint factory the colors were just unbelievable I just wasn't used to it uh, yes, that's, that's very uh, interesting. Whilst whilst you're more attuned to the weather, probably uh, in Scotland, yeah. so it's natural that if you spend a lot of time in the landscape, your photos will be about the weather. Um, yeah. Whilst if you're brought up in Tuscany, you cannot help but uh, making images that are about colour. I think that's yeah. completely uh, true. But th there again, once you've had a bit of experience, if you took a trip to Tuscany, you would be so over, it's like going to Rajasthan in India. You know, you're so overcome by the the colour that it's natural. You 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 get a new lease of life and you you run around actually photographing colour. So yeah. in a way, it's great to explore those environments as a newbie because the the, the you, you know the thrill is just um, e extreme. And uh, you know sometimes you become a bit blasé with your own environment. Um, and it's it's good to go somewhere new to recharge the batteries and to see the world in a different way. Just like it is if you predominantly use, say, a 70 to 200 lens, the best thing you can do would be to buy a wide-angle lens and limit yourself to working with that for a period of time to see the world anew. Yeah. Mm. Now, this one, we've got to talk about this because uh, I loved this image. This was part of your recent Level 9 critique. So, folks, there are 20 levels that uh, apprentices pass through in the initial... Uh, sphere 0 and Sphere 1. Once they reach level 20 they move on to um, potentially a different master and a new set of um, you know experiences uh, but I've got these folks initially for the first 20 and this was uh, Hughes level 9 which he completed recently um, and we gave a very long actually um, critique on this image and we talked about it at some length but do you just want to talk however you want to approach this Hugh Maybe uh, about what the yeah. I'll just, I'll just talk about it in terms of the journey in the Canon um, mm. rather than the photo itself. And mm. obviously, I started off exclusively with landscapes, and I wanted to I wanted to try and expand that. Um, and I, th I, look, I looked at street and architecture. I didn't want to not to try everything, but I just said rather take two other genres and have a look. Um, it's, they're actually pretty quite difficult because I live in the country. I don't get opportunity to. So it's a lot easier to do landscapes where I am. Uh, but this was in Edinburgh, and I it was probably the first street photograph I've ever taken, really, pretty much. Um, and it's obviously the it wasn't just taking a street for the sake of street; it was the social aspect of the photograph as well. So I wanted to tell a story, but a different story from from nature, the wonders of nature. This is just the uh, the human being side of things. So I think it's part of my part of my journey through the Arcanum is the encouragement to try different things to push myself out of my comfort zone. And I think that's important, and I think that's why working with people that take all sorts of different photographs and the different styles is is really healthy. Mm. Yes, yeah, so well, I remember you deliberately set yourself that task. You. At one stage, you decided I'm going to go and do architectural photography this weekend, or you know I'm going to do some street-based photography, and uh, it wasn't set for you that task by anyone else. And this is this is one of the things that makes people successful. They don't need a teacher in a way. A, a, a paper bag could teach them. <laughs> they they just you know they just uh, set set their own. They're they're motivated, and they set their own tasks, and then they just seek. Uh, feedback from time to time. You're a perfect example of that. That's why it's so easy to work with. <laughs> Malleable. <laughs> but it really is a, a wonderful image and I think maybe one day I'll look at posting because um, uh, you, you submitted five photos for this uh, critique and I might just slice out this particular photo and the discussion we had about it, you know, or on all the levels that it works. Yeah. Well, do, you want, do you want to pause it for two secs? Uh, I can't, Hugh. Okay, all right. 
Do you need to, uh, to grab the door or something? Yeah, yeah. Just two seconds. Thanks. You're right, you're right. So, folks, this is the real world, and that's our friend uh, Hugh Ferguson who's just gone off to um, probably get a Christmas delivery. Um, hopefully it's a new lens or something exciting like that. So we're just going to look at a couple more of Hugh's pictures uh, before we finish up. I think we have three more to go. And uh, I hope you're enjoying it so far. I mean, it, uh, I, I think it's a, a really in interesting introduction to uh, the journey that an individual photographer has gone through just over about a, I think it's a, a five month period. Someone who had been photographing for, I don't know, perhaps 18 months before he joined and uh, what he's achieved in the five months since he has, a, has um, uh, been a member of the Arcanum, the relationships he's formed um, with, and in so doing we've given you an introduction to how the Arcanum sort of works and particularly how my cohort or my community inside the Arcanum works. So sorry, Glenn. That's that's fine. We've talked about Hugh's responsibilities as a moderator as well. So we've just onto <laughs> these last couple images, Hugh. Okay, because it's my neighbour who just ran into my car. <laughs> oh. Oh. Great. Uh, right. Yeah, this this is um, well, actually, this is this is the latest photograph I've I've, ta I've taken that's in this series, and it's. Uh, it, well, the, the first thing I liked about it was I. This is completely done in Lightroom, so I didn't take it out of Lightroom. So I was, I was quite pleased I managed to get this effect through just just the Light, Lightroom uh, functionality. But it's also I wanted to distill the whole scene into the bridge and not and, and uh, not concentrate too much on the sky and, and even the water. So I wanted I wanted to highlight the bridge structure, and I wanted to highlight the the industrial iron with sitting in a in a natural environment. Mm. Those um, railway bridges in Scotland, there must be so many of them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and you know that the history, because uh, I guess most of them were constructed during the Industrial Revolution. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when, when industry came to villages and, you know, big cities formed and people from the small farmlets moved into the city and, um, you know, for better or for worse, um, and the working life changed. And, uh, you know, this, these were major symbols of um, prosperity and progress of their time, weren't they? Yeah. I actually took another photograph, which I put into my level 11, actually, which is just that. And it, and the, the way the, the way I thought of that was it's actually got the plaque of the people that built it. So I've just I've just done a very close up on that, and it's actually uh, because it's not sort of eighteen something or other. It's actually quite yeah. interesting. That's nice, and it, it it leads me to think about the approach you take when you photograph something, because there is the notion that every picture should contain a a story of some sort. And so yeah. you can take like a photojournalistic approach and and do you know a vista if you like of the whole bridge maybe a panoramic shot, and then you come in and you photograph uh, details that are important. You might yeah. photograph someone uh, crossing the bridge, you know, or some kids playing nearby the bridge, you know, and have the bridge in the background, place it in its environment, and and uh, a detail shot such as the plaque. All of those elements go together into what's referred to as a photo essay. And that's often a good way uh, to approach photographing something, particularly if you want to get it published in a traditional format, you know, like a magazine or a newspaper. That's really the, the way a photojournalist would approach it. It's yeah. somewhat similar to National Geographic approach, actually. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's a rip. Now let's have a look at the next one. Yeah, this is... Um me on the landscape hunt again, but this time I was looking for trying to, as I said before, distill the essence of the place into a very simple image. So this is just before just before dawn. I to, I, I do actually like aesthetic layer like silhouettes. I think they can be probably the, one of the more technically easier things to do. Uh, 
sometimes it's a cheap shot just doing a similar a silhouette but so I didn't want to just take the tree I wanted to incorporate some light and some some pattern in the sky as well so mm. so that's why that's what out of the series I took this is the one that I really like because I I was going for the simplicity I wasn't uh, and I, but I wanted to incorporate aspects of light and shape and color as well I mean that blue owl color is lovely it sure is it sure is yeah and it's very evocative that color but you know in terms of my journey that's you know simplifying here we go this is uh, instinctively I can I can uh, relatively good at recognizing uh, compositions of the landscape environment in a city environment I just, I just went out looking uh, yeah, seeing things was uh, something I'm not used to in, in an urban context so I was I was going out looking for shadow light and, and pattern and this is actually just a it's just a wall uh, in fact it's a concrete wall where they introduced some lines just to give it some context and artistic feel and the light was you know midday really harsh light so there was nothing really to take around that was uh, had, had any life or dimension so this is the actual light you actually see more of the shadow of the of the shapes than you are actually of the shapes of the this is sort of raised uh, concrete lines mm. and it's a shadow of the, the street lamp next to it so again, it was just really trying to sort of simplify things, just see what attracted me and, and make sure that I hone in just on that element and nothing else. Yeah, it's interesting because the, the shadow, the notion of the shadow is a little bit like the notion of the reflection. It's, it's actually removing it from the, the object from reality and adding a sort of sense of the surreal to the photograph. Um, and you know um, the way it's been photographed, it, the image is compressed, so there's no sense of space in the photograph. It's very two-dimensional, and that's the perfect way to approach an image that's about texture and line. Um, because space, you know, if there's space in a picture, you think about space. But by getting rid of space, it forces us to think about the other things. So um, the choice of focal length was really important here as well. But yeah, it's so graphic, and it's it's a perfect uh, it's perfect in black and white, isn't it? Because um, yeah. you, you've brought it down to basically like a cheap photocopy. <laughs> you know, um, most of the tonality is stripped out. It's black. It's uh, uh, near white, and just a couple shades of grey, a dark grey, and a, maybe a light grey. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's down to just those few basic building blocks and. I think that simplicity is really important in this picture because now we're not looking at a beautiful tonal scale image, we're actually looking at those dark lines, shapes against a light background. It's the graphic nature of this yeah. image is what makes it work and you know it's actually quite abstract, it's a really, it's a very successful photo. Uh, it's interesting you say the abstract because I was listening to your definition which I thought was fantastic but abstract but the, the surprising thing about this photo is not no one, no one can guess what it is. Yes, yes. Some, yeah. people, some people, because strangely enough, the shadow of the light is the the lamppost is so is so sharp that some people don't think it's a shadow; they think it's an actual lamppost. Interesting, yeah. And and you know the, the shadows are interesting um, photographically because the time of day. Um, which has something to do often with the direction of light when you're talking about natural light like the sun, um, the, the time of day and the weather um, affects the shadow dramatically. You know, is it an intense black shadow? Is it razor sharp, the edge of the shadow? Is it soft and diffuse, you know, like a grey lead pencil turned on its side um, when you're, you know, you're, you're drawing a, a squiggle? Uh, or is it a really sharp edge pencil? You know, those things are all determined by the light. And um, to study light, it's also important to study shadows. Um, shadows are so important in photographs. Um, and I, I, I'm just convinced most people don't think about shadows enough when they make pictures. Um, and you can't have light without dark. I mean, um, George Lucas understood that because um, <laughs> Star Wars is, you know, he's, he, he studied psychology. 
and there's there's no um, accident uh, that he came up with the name the dark side. In fact, he, there's no alternative because even though clearly the Jedi are you know the light side, they're not referred to. It's just the dark side or whatever else. Um, but it's such a, a, a you know a strong concept in our psyche. This notion of light and dark and how it refers to good and evil and all that. Um, yeah, and uh, it does force us to think about things other than what was actually photographed. And that's yeah. that's why it's abstract. That's why it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it takes us out from the now, doesn't it? It, it removes us yeah. from the reality of the everyday. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. Um, and, and, and I would have never made this photograph if I hadn't gone to the oh, Canon. Yeah, great, wonderful. So they were great. Um, thanks so much for sharing those, and I'm sure... You know, the folks tuning in will really appreciate um, that pretty insightful um, explanation you went through of your images and, you know, the exploration of your time in the Arcanum. So I've just got one more question for you, Hugh. Given that you've been uh, with us for about five months, um, that it was the first community that I, um, you know, am, am responsible for, um, it's, it's quite mature now, of course, um, but... If, if you were giving advice to someone, someone who was interested in applying to join the Arcanum, um, I, I guess rather than just saying yes or no, assuming you're, you'd be happy to recommend the Arcanum, are there certain people that you think would benefit particularly from um, joining the Arcanum? And also, what, would, what should people, um, what notions should they have in their head about what they need to do once they're in the Arcanum, you know, what sort of expectations should they have an understanding of to really get their money's worth and 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 you know get a lot of joy from the experience? Yeah, well, firstly, I would recommend it without a second hesitation. Um, but that's by the by, it's I think someone like myself, someone who, who's, who's 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 reached a plateau, who's got a relative not quite confident in their photo photography. Uh, who wants to? Who wants to learn? Who wants to get better? I think. I think. Uh, you don't. You, you basically got to. Do, you got to come thinking like I don't know it all, and you know. If you, go, if you come thinking that I'm just going to spread the word how great I am, then it's not for you. It's. Uh, it's, you've got to you've got to have a yearning to be I, my belief, and, and I can only to speak for myself. You only got you got to have a yearning to push yourself and to, and to get better. And your expectations, your expectations got to be realistic as well. I'm, I I can sometimes lack of patience is my biggest problem. You know, after two years, what 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 what, what, what should I really expect to be? The, you know, uh, you know, my my photography is where it should be after two years. So. You've got to go through. You've got to go through your apprenticeship. Just excuse the pun. It's that's that's what it's about. But I think uh, in terms of well, when I when I first when I first heard of the Arcana, there wasn't a lot of detail behind it, so I took note of it and then I applied. And then I started hearing there was a bit they filled out a bit more about what it was what it was what it was. And I actually hesitated. I actually nearly didn't join because I realised from what I little I was seeing. That it requires a huge, well, not huge. But it, it requires a commitment from you, not mm. to sit back and learn, but to actually to to be part of it and actually contribute. And if you're not prepared to do that, then you're doing yourself a disservice. But you're also doing your fellow cohort members a disservice because they rely on you to interact. So I think if you if you got zero time, and it, it, you should think about it because. It doesn't take an awful lot of time, but it's, it's got to be relatively consistent over a period of time. You've got to, you've got to feel that you want to contribute and that you can contribute and you've got something worth contributing. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, given that I've had years... Um, I mean, I studied photography formally for nine years and I, I taught at um, institutions for 12, but I've taught uh, pretty much full-time, but I've taught on a part-time basis for much longer than that. But always in those sort of um, traditional institutions, and I mean the obvious advantage of something like the Arcanum is that folks they can do it at home, they can do it in their lunch break at work. You know, mm. um, you just 
check in a couple times a day and you know it's 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 easy then to find for instance an hour a day uh, you might spend 10 minutes we often get I, I know my my friends in New Zealand who are uh, in the cohort they often check in at you know I think uh, I'm not sure what the time is in New Zealand but it's probably like 6:30 in the morning because we've got a couple early rises there and it, it seems to me that once the alarm clocks off gone off they get on their uh, their computer or their their mobile device and get in and have a look and 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 you know comment on a few posts that have been made or maybe um, add a post themselves. So some folks are coming in two or three times the average day and that's how they they um, get their make their input. Other folks probably set aside some an hour or two a couple times a week. You know, it's different for everyone. Um, and you know, I, I would prefer that folks are spending more time with their camera making pictures and then working them on the computer. But they need both, and and what we provide is information, inspiration, and motivation to actually then get out and, and make the photos. And it seems to be working, doesn't it? Because folks are moving through the individual levels um, fairly consistently, um, and um, you know the the proofs in the pudding. So they're not passive; they're not just looking at curated information, as you said. They're actually getting there a lot of them and um, posting regularly, and um, and also undertaking the um, um, uh, the photography they're required to, and um, and often the stuff they're not the non compulsory things like the weekly challenge and photo of the week. We've got a lot of people that um, regularly put images in there. Um, so yeah, I think um, I think it's been very very successful. But your point's well made because. It it is it, it's not what you get out of it; it's what you put into it. And the more involvement folks have, the more they they will get out of it. The happier they'll be, the more quickly they'll advance. Um, and one of the great advantages is because it's online. Because if you had to go into school once or, or twice a week and get home, just getting there and getting back, let alone the class time, that's your commitment to the Arcanum, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I wouldn't want to give the impression that you've got to commit hours and hours and hours. You don't. It's no. just that's not that's not at all. And the, you can go away and come back and sort of have have phases where you're more active, and then you go away again. But it's yeah, it, it, I mean, it allows it. That's whole the whole, no, whole notion of the academy allows that to happen. But I think you've got to say from the outset, I'm you know I'm going to commit to this as fully as I have to. And, and contribute. Yes, that that's the word. Uh, but it, it's it's self-paced study, as you say. So folks work at the pace they're comfortable with, and they'll adjust that pace depending on their life and how things change from week to week and month to month. Uh, and some people will just get in and spend maybe one big evening a week. You know, we we don't mind as long as they feel they're getting enough out of it. Um, but I do get a lot of feedback from folks that are. In the community regularly, and they've told me a lot of them that you know they hate it if they have to go off and do other things for a day or two. You know, like <laughs> it's their sugar. <laughs> they they just love it so much. And the the folks that feel that way are the ones who have made that commitment. But we're all yeah. creatures of habit, and um, you know we could we could spend an hour or two uh, on the couch watching, just moving the remote because we're not happy with what's on the tube. Um, and it's just great to be, um, you know, filling our life with things that are inspirational, that uh, are really helping us get to where we want to go in a way that's not stressful. And um, that's what we're trying to provide people with. I, I think it helps if you're very au okay with Google+, Plus because people must think that I spend a hell of a lot of time on the community. I, I don't. It's just that I've got a workflow that's, you know, extremely intuitive and very easy. So... I don't have to spend a lot of time on it, and I think I feel I feel for the people that have come in completely raw and having to deal with some of the you know learning learning Google Plus as well as everything else. It's it must be more difficult. Yeah, I think you're spot on, um, and you know I I understand that um, because of course that was me, and I did my initial training under Trey Ratcliffe for something like a month which was actually to go through the same sort of process I'm putting everyone else through. And so that was great because it taught me about um, 
the, the potential difficulties for folks who didn't understand how Google Plus worked. And so when I created the cohort, uh, we then, and working with you in Kingsley, you know, we started to put together instructional videos and, and give a lot of one-on-one -on -one support to help people and so that they'll understand um, how it all works and learn something interesting in the process. Um, and I think we, we still obviously have this issue where people are often a bit stressed in the beginning, but it usually only lasts about a week because they come in and they see all these amazing images and they see people submitting level 9, level 12, whatever, and they're only at level 1. But, you know, people are ahead of them just because they started earlier. But within a couple of weeks, yeah. folks have, have moved on and are really, really comfortable and have made friends... In sometimes in their own, in their own um, state, other times in completely different parts of the world, and you know that's that's just an unbelievable um, opportunity that I think we offer as well with this online form of education. Mm. Yeah, um, so I think that's given folks a really good idea about the Arcanum, um, and in doing so, we've introduced folks to. Um, what it is to be an apprentice in the Arcanum and you know the next level up, the, the moderator, because the moderator is someone who, like yourself, has made an extra commitment and has spent time um, not just working through the challenges and all of that like everyone else, the various assessment tasks, but has also um, determined that they want to help other folks uh, with their experience and their time in the Arcanum. So, you know, that that's been greatly appreciated. I get an enormous amount of feedback from folks commenting on, um, you know, the work that you do, for instance, Hugh. Also, the work that Kingsley does, and um, you know, you've been a fantastic asset to me, um, to the rest of the community, and of course to the greater Arcanum. And that's why I'm really hoping that you know you'll you'll be able to stay in the Arcanum uh, for a long, long time to come because you, know, I think you're a tremendous resource and you'll be um, greatly appreciated by more and more people over coming years as they, they get to know you and as you progress through, um, you know, through the path. Um, so, you know, I, I want to thank you, Hugh, and it was great to see your images, and I think fantastic for folks who are interested in the Arcanum to get an idea of how it actually works from a, an apprentice's point of view, and also to get an idea of what it would be like possibly to be a mentor, uh, sorry, a moderator, and in fact, you do a lot of mentoring in that role, um, and just to see the um, the journey that you've undertaken over recent months, given that photography, this passion you have, is still relatively uh, new in your life, it's it's really quite exciting. Um, so you know, just want to say thanks again, Hugh. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Very kind. Well, it's been great. Now, um, folks, thank you so much for uh, listening in. Um, that was Hugh Ferguson from um, the Arcanum, a, an apprentice and moderator in my community there. This is Glenn Guy and uh, the Travel Photography Guru. You can see me, uh, find what I do at travelphotographyguru.com and I look forward to talking to you all again soon. Thanks so much and bye for now.